Parnassus Books is a lot more than your average bookstore. This is a true reader's paradise. An open and inviting space where the employees are friendly and knowledgeable. The floor to ceiling shelves are stacked with bestsellers as well as local Tennessee writers. And one huge bonus, the store dogs are always hanging out and looking for new friends. Parnassus Books is the perfect place to start a home library. And that's why I met Hobie Hubbard here to get some top shelf advice about the books Baby Brown will need to see on his little bookshelf. Oh my goodness, this store just has so many great books and such a cool vibe. And what do you think is your actual favorite part about Parnassus? Everything. <laughs> I, I love being in a bookstore. To me, it is, if I'm reading, I love it. If I'm working on writing, there's something about being around this many words that feels very creative. So I, I love this as a reminder that you can sort of never run out of things to write about and talk about because there's all of this in here. And this is like a true bookstore. This is, this uh, is yeah. the way bookstores are meant to be. Exactly. It's run by people that love reading and love writing in the case of the owner, who's an incredible writer herself, yes. Ann Patchett. I also love how when you look at the walls, they have all of the great recommendations. and Everyone that works yeah. in here will always have recommendations. You can never come <laughs> in and go, oh, I think I want whatever without them having some idea of where to send you. But we're not here for this section. No, we're here for the kids' books today. The okay. good stuff. So let's, so let's go. go. <laughs> Jinx. I think we are going to need that U-Haul. I was about to say, you look and you just see yeah. every single classic that, like Curious George, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. We have to do Good Night Moon. Oh, I yeah. Mean, this is the just the ultimate best. Ultimate yeah, classic. Yeah, it's you've got great illustrations with that story that just, you know, will melt you. Are you going to be able to narrow it down to a pile for me of suggestions? If by pile you mean like. <laughs> yes, yes. Like the entire room? Yeah, yeah, basically three shelves worth. Well, we'll start with five or six. Okay. And then we're going to work our way up to a full shelf. To a full 500. Yes, exactly. Okay, good. But five or six seem like but a these, nice place to start. Eventually, these are all coming home with us. Don't kid yourself. Let's see them. <laughs> what you got for me? <laughs> well, and there's no way you can talk about kids' books without coming through the kids' door. Oh, absolutely. I mean, what, what's, what would be the point, so. This is just the start. <laughs> okay. This will not be all the books that your child gets, but this is a start. <laughs> This is probably the newest of any of them. Okay. But it's the, the Jesus Storybook Bible. Oh. Uh, this woman, Sally Lloyd Jones, has made these the great stories from the Bible into Bible stories that are so cool to read, and the illustrations are incredible. Oh, that's great. And um, I've actually been known to read from this book myself, <laughs> though I'm slightly older than the target audience. But the way she writes these stories are are wonderful. Okay, this is my all-time favorite book I ever. I remember that one. <laughs> Harold in the Purple Crayon. This has all the Harold books, so if you don't get enough of the one adventure, there's lots more. But what I love about this, I loved it as a kid and still do, is that it's it's all about using your imagination. You know, Harold takes his purple crayon and draws himself into these adventures and then draws his way back out, which I love. You know, it's sort of what, what we're all doing. Oh, and I remember you reading us that book. That one was just, it's so fun and then it's so imaginative and I just remember being really captivated by that yeah, one Yes, super simple drawings, but I absolutely love this yes. book. <laughs> and keeping in the theme of adventures, Polar yes. Express. Well, Baby Brown is going to be a December baby. That's right. Makes it perfect. Yes. So it's all about, you know, listening for that bell so mm -hmm. that you don't lose what the spirit of Christmas really is. But again, you've got these incredible, uh, you know, these incredible illustrations throughout this book, um, which is one of the things I loved about it. Oh, such and, a classic. Yeah. And for me, I discovered this really about the time you guys showed up on the scene. <laughs> so you, you, it's tied in with you. This would be my well, I'd be right up there with Harold and the Purple Crayon. Okay. Me. Yeah. Where the Wild Things Are, which again is this little boy going on on an adventure and with the best illustrations ever. Yes. I mean, because who doesn't like those those monsters? I do remember you know? though, like they did freak me out a little bit, but then you loved the story so much, yeah. you kind of got over it. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, and Max is in charge of them, you yeah. know? So that's what I love about this. Again, this kid goes off in, on an adventure, misses dinner, but ends up back at home with dinner waiting. This one 
you might not be as familiar with I was to say, Max I don't Makes I've, a Million. I've heard that one. Um, this is about a dog who goes oh, on an adventure okay. because, as a dog would who lived in New York City, Max really wants to live in Paris. Oh, you know, obviously. Wants to be part of the cool scene in Paris. Right. We so we he, exactly. So again, <laughs> absolutely incredible illustrations through this book. Oh, this woman how named cool. Myra Kalman who just does, I mean, this, the colors are awesome. But again, it's Max on an adventure. Mm -hmm. You know, he figures out ways to pay for his trip, uh, becomes a <laughs> painter. So, you know, for anyone who's sort of done something that's unusual, like maybe becoming a musician, say. You know, who this, do is, that? this is your guidebook right here. Max oh, that's makes a million. Great. I love all that, how all of these books also have really vivid illustrations, yeah. lots of colors, and a lot of things to keep kids captivated while you're reading. That's, as you know, that's, that's going to, you'll know it more and more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the deal is capturing that imagination. And this last one, this one's almost brand new. It's James Taylor's song. Like the song. James Taylor. The James Taylor. Okay. And it's his song, Sweet Baby James, mm -hmm. which is one of my all time favorite songs. But they've turned it into this incredible pop up. Oh my book. goodness. And that's so fun. Does it almost have like a cowboy theme? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Because it's based on the song that James wrote uh, for his nephew when his nephew was first born. So uh, it, it sort of captures all of that and you've got those great pop-up illustrations. That's amazing yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, you would not think James Taylor and no. Baby Book, but no, we you, are in Nashville. We are in Nashville, so of course <laughs> why not? So yeah, but this is another great one. And if we had time, I could probably find you a hundred more before we left here. Because <laughs> a well-stocked library is, is one the of key. the key things exactly. I think that little kids need. Well, Hobie, thank you so much for meeting me here at our favorite bookstore. Absolutely. Now, I'm just going to be pulling the U-Haul around so we can load up all of the books because I have a funny feeling Baby Brown is going to be quite the reader if you or I have anything to say about and, that. <laughs> and he will. And, you know, I work here Mondays through Wednesdays, so you can just come find me while I'm on my shift. And get a great <laughs> book recommendation right. from me as well. I'll keep finding new books.